Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. And today we're gonna to be looking at Blue Cat Audio's remote control. I'm gonna show you a few things. First, I'm gonna show you how to just set it up in the most basic sense. And what you can do with Blue Cat Audio's remote control is you can actually have one control control several plugins at the same time. So say you wanna control all the filters on different plugins at the same time, you could set up one knob to do that. You could have different knobs do it, but it's all on the same plugin so instead of having to open up each individual one you could just balance them all like this could be a contact this could be another contact instrument and you could balance them without having to open or go between two different contact windows so that's pretty nice you could also set up macros macros are much more advanced but we're going to look at that so right here i have a macro set up where you could see the level of the midi and then this is another midi out that could be sending out to control you know any number of other things so macros uh took a, quite a bit of experimenting. But anyways, we're gonna see some some various things and you can see that uh, being able to do this with MIDI could be pretty handy. So let's dive into the setup. So first off, let's go ahead, let's just delete everything so that we are in the same starting position. So I'm gonna get rid of this, this, and this. All right, so here we are. We've got a track with, you know, Harmer on it. it it's playing some cool stuff on it. If we bring up the filter a, a bit. So on and so forth. Some juicy stuff. So now let's say, hey, we want to control Harmer. We want to use a remote control in order to do this. So first we need to give remote control a home. You can't use an instrument track. Let me just show you why. If you if you try and use an instrument track, we'll just call this, you know, remote control. And then you, you know, do an instrument. It doesn't show up. You can't put inserts on it. And so we can't do that way. So what we're going to do, whoops, is we are going to instead use an audio track. So if we go to audio remote control, this will stick around so we can do this. So we're gonna call this remote control one. Later, we might add a second one when we get to the macros. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click okay. I'm gonna move this to the bottom because this could be confusing. And on this one, we are going to add remote control. And okay, there's two versions. There's a VST three that I have and a VST. There's, there's others as well, but VST3 doesn't play nice right now. Studio One didn't like it. I don't know why. I spent a long time before I realized it was the VST3 thing. This is just true with VST3 in general. Sometimes they just don't like to work, but they'll work perfectly fine in other DAWs. I don't I don't know why. So just use the VST version, and this, this one works 100% out of the gate, no problems. So we're going to use this one, and right off the bat, we are given some knobs and stuff. There's a bunch of different view options. If you go into the presets, we go over to factory presets. You've got monitoring so you can like look at stuff like some curves, like, oh my goodness, you could like do that kind of a thing. You can mix them with some curves and some knobs. All right, so we have this set up. However, by default, when you come in here, why is this sticking around? The things are all off. So you have to turn them on. I, I think this is here just so that if you accidentally move something while you're while you're doing like a MIDI learn, it, it, they don't accidentally activate is is why I think they're off by default. But the first thing I pretty much always do is turn everything on. So that's that's my process there. Do as you wish. So okay, with them all on now, this is pretty much done for what we wanna do. We now need a way to get the MIDI from here to go to Harmer in this case. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another track and there's no MIDI track inside of you know, Studio One, but there are instrument tracks which act just like MIDI tracks. They're, they're, they decided to simplify it. So we're gonna go to instrument, and in an instrument, you could choose an input. We're gonna choose the remote control. This is gonna take the MIDI out and send it into this track. So we're gonna do it on channel one. And we're going to take this and we could choose an output. And for the output, we're gonna choose Harmer. And so channel one is pretty standard. So I'm gonna click okay. It creates the new thing and I'm gonna rename this to a uh, remote control. I'm just gonna call RC to Harmor. All right, cool. So remote control is now going up to Harmer. And if we open up Harmer here, there's an important detail I should mention here. We'll also open up the remote control. So you might think, okay, now if I right click on a control and do MIDI learn, this has learned from the previous, so I just undid that, MIDI learn. All right, so this is ready to learn, but if I move this, oh, it, it connects, because this is on. If this wasn't on, like if we have the monitoring off, like, you know, 
no no dice because it's not sending the signal a pretty easy mistake to make so make sure that you're sending the signal otherwise you you can't make connections because nothing's going over there but as you can see it's as simple as right clicking and moving around and we now have a control that we can mess with now there's a rule here that each control needs its own CC. So this makes the problem of macros kind of complicated. So for example, we set this up to be CC1. If we go in a little wrench, we can see CC1 is controlling that. If I go to a second control, let's say I want to control the, the pluck as well. So I could right click this MIDI learn and I try and do the same knob. It only will let me control one. One CC, that's the rule, uh, at least with Studio One. But let's go. Let's uh, let's just set up a few things real quick, just just to show you how this works. So I'm gonna take this one. I'm I'm gonna relearn it. I'm gonna put it on this first control. We will take the decay of this filter envelope here, and we will put that on another control. So I'm gonna unlearn that and relearn it and move it here. So now these two control those things. Uh, what the heck? We'll control the pluck. So we'll do MIDI learn. Put it on the pluck. Let's uh double click these, or I think you just single click them. We'll call it filter. We'll call this one uh, decay. We'll call this one uh, pluck. And we'll go into the effects. We'll do one more. We'll do the amount. So I'm gonna MIDI learn this one. And we'll call this distortion amount AMT. Why not? All right, so now when we move these, you know, we get the various things. As, as we would. So now if we play it, we can. You know, just some nice, nice stuff there. So right there, we've already got all our controls here. We could close this and we could, you know, control a different instrument with this. So for example, uh, let's grab another Harmer just, just for... I think I already had Harmer uh, selected, but you know, it's whatever. I'm going to move this underneath the first Harmer. And we're not going to play any audio out this. I just want to show you that if you want, you could just do this over a bunch of things. So let's say that I want to control this one. Well, I'm going to need to send a, a separate MIDI thing to, to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another instrument track. And we're going to call this Remote Control to Harmer 2. And we're gonna take again the same channel one output. You can do multi-channel stuff too. Uh, I mean, all the channels are right there, just pick one. And we're gonna go to an existing instrument, this time to Harmer number two. And we'll go to channel one on that. We'll click okay. So now this remote control is going to output to those things. So uh, we'll, we'll have the regular Harmer and then Harmer two is second. You might, you, you know, you could group these underneath what they go to, it might make even more sense than what I'm doing here, but I digress. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna go to the remote control where we, we have it active. And now let's say, hey, we want this to control, you know, this, this filter over here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to just right click MIDI learn, make sure our monitor thing is on, and then we'll move this and boom, it works. So now we'll name this, you know, uh, filter, Harmer 2, H2 for that. This will be Harmer 1. So now if we turn this on and we move these, uh, we're going to have to get a little creative here with the screen space. So let's go, let's, let's pin this and let's grab the other one. We'll move this just down. So now there's filter 1, there's filter 2. And in fact, there is a way, let's say that we wanted to have you know, this one filter control, let me think about how this would be done. So this is getting a CC, this is getting a CC. They're on separate MIDI out channels though. So I think actually what you could do is you can go ahead and do MIDI learn on this and then move this. And oh, it didn't like that. What, why did you not like that? Do I have the outputs active? Yeah, I do. Oh. This one was not on. So let's see if we can't MIDI learn this one, move it. All right, MIDI learn this one, move it. Now do we have them both? Yes, we do. There we go. So you see, stuff like that happens all the time too, if you're not paying attention. You might have something like this off. 
Really easy mistake to make. So when they're on separate channels, macros are no problem at all. You could control a bunch of instruments at the same time. And if you want, let's say that, you know, we, we'd like to control a bunch of knobs on, on one instrument instead. And most instruments will have some basic controls down here. Let's say that you, you want to have more than just this and you'd like your macro to be connected to multiple instruments and you'd like to scale the outputs. Like, let's just say, you know, you're gonna get really sophisticated with your MIDI setup. Like who, who knows what you're planning? So what we're gonna do is, the way to get around this is, since each individual control needs its own CC, you can't simply, because the first thought is, oh, I just linked them to multiple controls. Well, these can output one CC, but they can't output more than one CC. So that's your first hurdle. So there's no way. And since the plugins don't want to line up on the same CC, you know, filter one has to have its own. If you try to, it'll overwrite it as soon as you try to assign it to a second thing. That second thing will just remove the first thing. So we, we've got to do this dance where we send in one CC. It goes to a remote control. And then it turns that one CC into a bunch of CCs because on the MIDI outs, this one can actually have them all listening on the same CC. Now there are some hidden settings here that you have to take advantage of if you want to do this. This is why it's more complicated. First, you see MIDI out, but there's no MIDI in for these. But if you click on this little cog and go to show settings, you'll see that each one actually has its own MIDI in in MIDI out setting so you can actually uh have these knobs listen and respond to uh, a midi input and then these can output the different cc's that you need that's what we're going to do and this is a little more complicated but it's really just an extension of what we've already done so we've already got our first remote control and it's living on this audio track let's add a second remote control and then that second remote control will generate our MIDI signal. You could also use like knobs on a, on an actual MIDI controller and stuff too. Uh, but we're going to generate a second MIDI signal. That's going to come in and those MIDI controls that are linked to Harmer are going to listen to that other MIDI controller. And then that MIDI controller, then when you turn that one knob, it'll turn all those, which will turn everything in Harmer. <laughs> That's the solution for a macro knob. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's do that. I think uh, we might see an update someday. I I'm hoping where internal wiring within the plugin itself is just is just possible. Or if it is, I'm an idiot. And I came up with this really crazy way to do it. So all right, let's go ahead. Let's add something. We're gonna go. We're gonna add an audio track because mm -hmm. it's gotta have somewhere to live. We're gonna call this our remote control number two. We're gonna hit OK, and I'm gonna move this to the bottom. To, and I'm going to change the color too to keep myself from being confused. Wow, it's really raining out there. All right, now we're going to go ahead. We're going to add on our remote control here. And again, I'm going with just regular VST version. And I'm going to leave this one on just its, its default thing. It's great. You look fantastic. And we're going to go over to the cog. We're going to go ahead and turn these on. I'm just going to do it with like the first three. We don't need anything fancy. We'll call this like macro one. And... What's crazy about these macros is you can control a bunch of instruments at the same time and a single instrument. Like these are like ultra macros in a way. So, okay, with this setup, what we're going to do is we are going to need, we need a MIDI controller channel in order to, a MIDI channel in order to send information to the first remote control. So we need to add an instrument track since that's how you do that in Studio One. And we're going to call this RC2 to RC1. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the first remote control. So the first remote control lives on the audio track right here. We're going to open this up and we're going to open up the ultra super secret setting area. In fact, let me show you just the basic one first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this one on. We're going to go into the back, make sure it's on. And it's listening. We're gonna put it on channel one, CC one. So it'll let me. Why? Why you? There we go. Okay, channel one, CC one. And if we open up, let's go ahead. Let's pin this so it doesn't go away. And we'll open up the second one. This macro one is outputting over those two channels, and we're gonna move it. And we should see it move. So you see, it is a moving. 
But the problem is there's no MIDI input in for, for these that's like easily visible. For this, we're going to go over to the settings and then go to control settings window. Now in here is a bunch of stuff, but this is also where you see that everything actually has a control input and a control output. Now here you can do all kinds of things. You can actually limit the range of it. So let's say you only want it to go from like 25% to, you know, 69%, you can do that. Let's say that you want to go control response, you want to change it to, you know, some other type of response, you could do that. Uh, what we're looking at here is we say, okay, well, we've got these controls here, filter, decay, pluck, and distortion amount. And those end after, this is why you might not want to change the names. So that's C8. So we want C9, 10, 11, and 12. And what the heck, we'll do 13 too. So 9 through 13. So we're going to turn on the MIDI for these. 10, 11, 12, we'll go down to 13. On the on the input control, so the out the output's already sorted. We already did that bit, so we don't we don't mind that. But this input we want to change, so we're going to change these, and then we want them all to listen to the same control input. So for 9, 10, 11, 12, we want them to listen over what is this? Is this channel or CC? We want them to listen over channel one, CC one. So these all need to have one one in front of them, like so. And right now you actually have to click OK in order to see the changes reflected. If I recall, it doesn't let you like preview it while you're editing. And that should, that should be it. So if we click OK, these inputs should now be listening to this output. So if we move macro one, look at that. They all move. It's glorious. Yeah, and you could do things like you could set up some more complicated routing and scale one by like 50%, change the range of one. Uh, you saw all those settings there. You just go in there, you just change them. Like, for example, let's take decay, decay, and we'll go into the control window settings. And what was that? That is nine, so that should be 10. So here's 10. We're going to change it to be, we'll give it, you know, fast one. And we'll start it at 25%. And we'll go to 69%, like so. Hit OK. And now when we go to minimum, that sits up there and then we can move it up and it caps out right there. And you could also map these to the inputs here. So a lot of power, a lot of control. You're able to just hook this up to whatever you want. So I know this was a video with less audio examples, but it's it's a MIDI video. And, and setting this up for the first time for me really had me just straight confused. It took me a long time to figure out I should have been using the regular VST version. And then the macro thing is something that I couldn't find anywhere. And it was something I really wanted to do. And so this is the, the solution I came up with. If you have a, a smoother one or a better one, let me know. I know there's like internal stuff you could be using, but I wanted to be able to do it with this because this will be, you know, I could do this in any DAW if I could figure it out here, unless the DAW doesn't play nice with CCs. And there's a few of them out there that are just not friendly towards CC, but stuff like Pro Tools, Studio One, Cubase, those are all going to have these features. So it'll be really easy to go between those. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.